Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Particle Tracing for Fluid Flow. We have already uploaded the first video. In that video, we talked about several scopes of this particular physics. What exactly we can model using this FPT that we have talked about. We have talked about dielectrophoretic force, electric field force, aquastrophoretic force, Brownian force, electromagnetic force and various other available forces that you can actually incorporate in your modeling. Today we will start the first modeling. First model will be building up and that will help you to understand how to work with this particular physics. So we go to 2D geometry. The particle tracing for fluid flow is available in the recently used tab. So I click on it. I select it. I go to study. I click on time dependent. So this would be the first model. So we'll be working with a very simple idea. So let us consider the Brownian force because the Brownian force is widely available. If you have certain temperature and tiny particles floating around, then you have a Brownian motions everywhere. So we want to actually model that particular physics here. So for that, what do we do? We take a rectangle or a square say. I keep it one meter, one meter and inside this I choose another rectangle say of dimension. So this would be uh, square only. So we can put all the dimensions same say 0.2 and 0.2 and let us put it at the center and somewhere here. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be the center point. So I click on build all objects. So you, you can see the inner rectangle is placed at the middle of the outer square. So both are squares by mistake. We have taken rectangle. You could have taken a square also. Now what I do is I put certain material here because we'll be working with Brownian motions and in the Brownian force, there is an option of viscosity. That means if the fluid is more viscous, if the surrounding is more, more viscous, you have more resistances. So it is there in the force. So you should choose some material for the time being. Let us choose water. Yes, water is chosen to entire geometry. Now I go to this particle tracing for fluid flow. As I have mentioned, I will be working with Brownian force. So I go to the force and I choose Brownian force. Now the Brownian force will be applicable to the entire solution space. But what we will be doing, we will be taking particles initially at the inner square and we will not take any particle at this particular zone. And then what, what we will be looking at due to the Brownian motion, whether the particle spread around or not, obviously it will be spreading around because we know it from the Brownian dynamics. But let us try to simulate it today. So what we do is we choose an option release. The release means you have to release the particles. So the particles will be released initially here because we are trying to keep the particles at this location. Now what I do is I look at the options in the setting windows. So there is an option mesh based already chosen, but we will be choosing density and in density we will be choosing 100 particles. So initial 100 particles will be kept there. So this is the option we are actually choosing from available options of ComSol. So we are telling it to have 100 particles in this particular zone inside square. Now it is, uh, I mean, there is an option particle properties where from you can actually choose your diameter of the particle and the density of the particle. So initially let us keep the diameter 10 micrometer and density let us choose user defined. It is taken by default 2200 kg per meter cube. It is okay because this is for learning purpose only. So we choose it. Now uh, let us look at the entire condition once again. So 
I have already told so in particle tracing for fluid flow it is solving for Newton's second law that is the force balance equation so here in all the forces are given and that is equated with dv dt where v is the velocity of the particle multiplied by mp is the mass of the particle so you can e easily remember this is nothing but newton's second law so now what we have to do is we have to do a meshing so initially we go for physics controlled mesh i do here a kind of finer mesh i click on build all so this is okay for the learning purpose because uh, otherwise, otherwise it will take more time uh, we can take extra fine mesh also it's okay now what I do is see Brownian dynamics is a very slow phenomenon and that's why our time scale should be higher so we should be working with a bigger time scale say we are working uh, 0 to 1 up to 100 second otherwise you will miss the phenomenon because it's a slow process slow process means you have higher time scale now everything is chosen i can click right click and get the initial value steps yeah it is it is the initial value so all the particles will be kept here now let us solve it with respect to time i click on compute it will take certain time to simulate but let us look at that also how long it is taking if you are doing any simulation with particle tracing then how long it takes so few things you have to remember if you are working with more particles so it will be solving for more particles so it will take more time so the entire time requirement depends on various factors one i have talked about that is number of particles the dimension of the solution space and also your complexity complexity mean if you are putting more forces it will calculate for more forces and you will have you will need more time so this is already done so this is the picture at zero time if we move you can see due to brownian motion it is spreading away this is how it is spreading away so you can also simulate it for lower time scale to look at the finer features but we are working with one second time scale so after one second it has become like this again so this is the brownian fluctuation dynamics this is very important for for particle based simulations because if you are working with micro and nano domains then your brownian dynamics is unavoidable and in those cases you may need to put the brownian forces so here let us look at the brownian force equation i'll just show you the equation i will not go into the details because you need to refer to articles in order to understand the force equation of the brownian force so i have taken this mu mu of the uh, that is the viscosity of the liquid here we have taken water and that is why mu is taken from the material property other properties like temperature is given here if you increase the temperature the fluctuation dynamics will increase you can uh, just simulate it and look at the temperature effect but i am not doing it because you can just play around with the temp with different temperatures so that was all about the initial simulation and instead of brownian force you can choose any other available force and you can play around so those are the forces available today we talked about brownian force some other day we'll be talking about dielectrophoretic magnetophoretic thermophoretic force this is very important nowadays because if you are working with say plasmonic particles and you have a plasmonic heating in those cases if you want to model your i mean particles fluctuations then this Brownian forces along with thermophoretic forces need to be taken. So today I am stopping here and I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates.